Hello and welcome to our Thursday Reflection. Our reading this morning is taken from Paul's first letter to Timothy, chapter 4. So Paul writes, The Spirit clearly says that in later times some will abandon the faith and follow deceiving spirits and things taught by demons. Such teachings come through hypocritical liars whose consciences have been seared as with a hot iron. They forbid people to marry and order them to abstain from certain foods which God created to be received with thanksgiving by those who believe and know the truth. For everything God created is good and nothing is to be rejected if it is received with thanksgiving because it is consecrated by the word of God and prayer. If you point these things out to the brothers and sisters, you will be a good minister of Christ Jesus, nourished on the truths of the faith and of the good teaching that you have followed. Have nothing to do with godless myths and old wives' tales. Rather, train yourself to be godly. For physical training is of some value, but Godliness has value for all things, holding promise for both the present life and the life to come. This is a trustworthy saying that deserves full acceptance. That is why we labour and strive, because we have put our hope in the living God, who is the saviour of all people, and especially of those who believe. Command and teach these things. Don't let anyone look down on you because you are young, but set an example for the believers in speech, in conduct, in love, in faith and in purity. Until I come, devote yourself to the public reading of scripture, to preaching and to teaching. Do not neglect your gift, which was given to you through prophecy when the body of elders laid their hands on you. Be diligent in these matters. Give yourself wholly to them so that everyone may see your progress. Watch your life and your doctrine closely. Persevere in them, because if you do, you will save both yourself and your hearers. And as always, we give thanks to God for his word. It's tempting to see in that opening verse a prophecy which has come true in the present day. However, it has always been true at all times from when Paul wrote those words until the times in which we live. But Paul is anxious that his protege, Timothy, should Ray be able to recognise what is happening and be, have the courage to denounce it? How are you at giving and taking advice? After all, it's often not easy to give advice without also giving offence. And not always easy to accept advice from others, and unless we have a great deal of respect for the other person, because we often see advice as criticism. So Paul's letters to Timothy are a clear indication of their relationship and their mutual esteem. Paul is obviously confident that Timothy will read, learn and inwardly digest all that he has to say. He takes great care to build up Timothy's confidence, to remind him of his own special gifts and to encourage him not to see his comparative youth as a problem. A timely reminder to us to listen to our young people. We may think we've seen it all and know it all, that as we get older, we've been there, done that and got the t-shirt. But sometimes a youthful perspective can give us fresh insights to see our faith, our church, our community through the eyes of our young people can help us 
in the things that we have to do and open our eyes to new perspectives. After all, Jesus was only 12 years old when he astonished the teachers and scribes in the temple. But above all, Timothy must ensure that his life reflects his teaching. He must practice what he preaches. Certainly a timely reminder to those of us who dare to stand up and speak in church or to record these reflections. It's sometimes said, oh, you can talk the talk, but can you walk the talk? That's a good question. The Gospels speak of changed lives, of becoming a new creation, of showing love and forgiveness, putting others before ourselves, of sacrifice and self-denial, of displaying the fruits of the Spirit. All things which Paul writes about in his letters to Timothy and to others. So we ask ourselves, how far do other people see these things in us? Obviously, we are only human. And speaking for myself, I regularly fail to live up to even my own expectations, let alone the expectations of other people and of God himself. But we are assured of God's forgiveness. If we try, and even if we fail, make mistakes, God has promised to forgive. And Jesus had a lot of time for sinners. It was the hypocrites who made him really angry. The hypocritical liars Paul mentions in that Bible reading. So following Paul's advice to Timothy, let us strive to talk the talk and walk the walk. As Richard Littledale, a Baptist minister, wrote, the walk of faith is just that, a walk of faith. As a walk, it may take us to places that we would not visit if we were traveling by train or going over, flying over it in an aeroplane. But walking in faith, there's no telling where it may take us. Only a certainty that Jesus is walking with us all the way. So let us pray in the words of St. Richard of Chichester. O most merciful Redeemer, friend and brother, may we know thee more clearly, love thee more dearly, and follow thee more nearly, day by day. Amen. So may God bless you. May you be aware of his presence with you in the days to come. Amen.